Hello class, this is lesson 3-2 about functions. And when we're talking about a function, what we're really talking about is a special relationship between two different numbers. Okay, and those numbers are called the input and the output, where each input is matched with exactly one output. So let me show you what's called a mapping diagram. One column will be our input, and the other column will be our output. And so I'll have a list of numbers for my input. So we'll say 0, 1, 2, and 3, and then we'll make up some other numbers for the output. And each input is matched with exactly one output. So that's why we're drawing an arrow. So that is an example of a function when we just see it in a table. Um, let me show you another example. This time the input will just make up some numbers 0, 1, and 3 in the output. I have four numbers, 2, 4, 6, and 8. And 0 is paired with 2, and it's also paired with 4. 1 is paired with 6, and 3 is paired with 8. Now because 0 is matching with two different outputs, this already is not a function, okay? So, um, a couple other terms that I just wanted to go over before we get started is um, other terms that you might see in your textbooks referring to input. So, the variable x is also talking about the input. It might also be called the domain. And then the final um, term is called the independent variable. Okay, so all of these are talking about the exact same thing, that left-hand column. The output has other names, and it's basically the opposite. So instead of the x, it's called the y variable, or it's called the range, or it's called a dependent variable, because the value depends on what you put in at the beginning. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at functions, and it is represented as an equation. This one is y equals 2x plus 1. And so first we're going to organize a table, and then we're going to plot it on our graph. So I have my x and my y column with 2x plus 1. That's kind of my workspace in the middle. And I now get to pick whatever points I want to plug into my function. And so I want to pick the easiest points to help me out. So I'm going to pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And one at a time, I'm going to plug it in to find out what the y would be. So that's negative 4 plus 1, which is negative 3. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 1 is negative 1. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. And then 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So there we go. So now I can plot all my points. So negative 2, and then down to negative 3. Negative 1, down to negative 1. 0, up 1. 1 up 3 and 2 up 5. And now I can connect all of my points and draw a straight line with my ruler and this is representing this function. Okay, let's go ahead and do another one now. So this time we're going to make a table and graph y equals 3 minus x squared. So again I'm going to draw my table with my x and my y and then in the middle, I'm going to have my workspace of 3 minus x squared, okay? And again, I'm going to pick those simple, those simple points, the negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, but you can pick whatever points you want. So 3 minus negative 2 squared. Negative 2 squared is 4, so 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So go ahead and write that down. All right, next is 3 minus negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared is 1, 3 minus 1 is 2. All right, now we're going to plug in 0. So 3 minus 0 squared is the same as just 3 minus 0, which is 3. 
All right, three minus one squared, so it's three minus one, which is two. And then three minus two squared, so three minus four is negative one. All right, let's go ahead and plot those. So negative two down to negative one, negative one up to two, zero up to three, one up to two, and two down to negative one. And if you notice, these points are forming a curved line instead of a straight line. And this is actually forming what's called a parabola, okay? So there is another example for you. So our final thing we're gonna talk about is the vertical line test, which is a fast way to see if a picture is a function. So here's the test. If you can draw a vertical line and it passes through two or more points, then it is not a function, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at these three pictures to tell whether they are functions based on the vertical line test. So for my first one, I'm gonna just draw a bunch of different vertical lines. And if you can see, each time it only passes through once, which means, yes, this first one is a function. It passed the test. Now for the circle, I'll draw a line and look, automatically it's hitting it twice. So no, this middle one is not a function. All right, our final one, I could just draw any vertical lines anywhere. And so I'll go ahead and do that, maybe in orange. And as you can tell, each time it's hitting it once. So yes, this one is a function as well. So now that we understand that functions are just specific relationships, we're gonna look at what's called function notation. And if you recall, we can have an equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. And now we're gonna replace this y with something called f of x. That means the function of x. Or like I said, it could also just be f of x. Okay, and so I'm just replacing that. This is really just telling us the name of this particular function. It is not saying that we are multiplying f times x. Okay, the function f is the name and x is the variable, so they are not being multiplied. So we're just going to look at one function. It's called h of x, and it's equal to negative 6x squared plus 18x plus 36. And we're going to do some work based off of this function. So the first thing we're going to do is just find out the function when I plug in 2. So negative 6 times 2 squared plus 18 times 2 plus 36. Let's go ahead and simplify. So that's negative 6 times 4 plus 36 plus 36. And that's negative 24 plus 36 plus 36, which is really 12 plus 36, which equals 48. All right, so the function h, when I plug in 2, is equal to 48. Our next one is finding the function when I plug in 4 minus the function when I plug in 1. So that's negative 6 times 4 squared plus 18 times 4 plus 36. And that's the function when I plug in 4. Take away negative 6 times 1 squared plus 18 times 1 plus 36. Okay, and now we can simplify. So I have negative 6 times 16 plus 72 plus 36 minus the quantity of negative 6 plus 18 plus 36. Okay, all right, so this right here is going to be negative 96 plus 72 plus 36 minus, let's see, I'm going to have 12 plus 36 still inside. And then I can just add up all of these integers. So that's going to leave me with negative 24 plus 36 minus 48. All right, and we're almost done. So that leaves me with positive 12 minus 48, which is equal to negative 36. 
So it was a lot of work, but this is just saying that the function um, h of 4 minus h of 1 is equal to negative 36. All right, final one. Let's find the function when I plug in 5 and then subtract 7 at the end. So negative 6 times 5 squared plus 18 times 5 plus 36 minus 7. Here we go. Negative 6 times 25 plus... Um, let's see here, 90 plus 36 minus 7, and that leaves me with negative 150 plus 90 plus 36 minus 7. And when I add all those integers together, uh, my final answer is going to be, mm, let's see here, negative 31. All right, and I'm done. So I hope that this lesson made sense about functions and their relationship. So on your own, I have two problems for you to try. Let me know if you have any questions when you come into class.